Hi, my name is Tyler, and this is Aftertouch Audio. Today, I want to go over how to cut an intense car sequence like this. Vehicle sound design can be a very involving process, including everything from recording to editing your samples and to mixing your final sequence. Before we go out and start recording or purchasing any vehicle sample libraries, it is a good idea to make a list of what you need. A standard car sequence can contain these elements. Engine recordings. Exhaust recordings. Air intake recordings. interior recordings, tire recordings, suspension recordings, elements, and synthetic effects. So how do you go about capturing all of these sounds? Well, I've actually reached out to Pole Position Productions, one of the best sample library companies for vehicle samples, and asked them if they can provide a behind the scenes video on how they go ahead and record their vehicles. Hi, uh, so uh, we're here now at the Lunda Airport for Airstrip, uh, which we rent exclusively to, for recordings. And I wanted to show you how it looks with the microphones out on the strip. So let's take a ride. So uh, here we have station A, where we make the first stop with the vehicle and doing some startups and such and then we continue to station B over here where we do another stop and then reverse back to station A and back here and then drive to the end of the airstrip and do a U-turn and then back and then we do that in uh, different speeds and so on. And then, of course, we're doing ramps and steadies as well. So uh, I'm going to take you on a, on a trip in a, in a car as well to check out how that works. So here we're rigging up with the microphones in the uh, engine apartment. Uh, so uh, what's going on here? Yeah, so uh, in most engines we try to set up uh, three uh, mono uh, microphones and one uh, BP-88 stereo microphone. And the goal here is to have uh, a big range of places in the engine, so if the one mic uh, gets too much wind, the other mics would work. And also one extra mic in uh, in the intake. So six channels all in all in the engine. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. So this is a little, little special case because it's an RE and uh, well, it's constructed a little bit different with exhaust on the side and such. Also, uh, it's only the 100 uh, that is uh, attached to the toilet, toilet lid. Hmm. Uh, and that's it for now. What's, what's that happened? What did you do? <laughs> Sorry, I uh, I slated all the microphones that are attached on for the sweet eagle, so that you afterwards will know which microphone is on which channel. Oh, all right. Good to know, I guess. Yes, very good to know. <laughs> Can be very confusing. We have microphones a little bit everywhere here in this RV. And I think they are about to uh, map up, uh, rig up the front here as well. Hi. All right, Robin. So uh, we are about to rig this uh, Nissan or 33 Skyline. So uh, we're in the ending compartment right now. So uh, what's your plan? Where are you going to put the mics? And what so, mics? I will uh, put one stereo microphone uh, somewhere in the middle. And then uh, to get a, a wider stereo perspective, I have one right and one left. Uh, left and one right. 
uh, and then another one in the center, mono microphones, all three of them. Also, we put one, if there are more than one intake, we put them in both intakes. In this case, we have one intake here. Yes. So I guess it's going to be one mic there then. So why, what are we trying to capture here in the engine compartment? Yeah. <laughs> the engine sound. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Complicated. Uh, the, the, the goal is to get uh, as little uh, wind as possible. So not only does the wind come from the speed, but also from the fans in front of the engine. So uh, strategically uh, uh, position the mics so we get as little wind. All right. So if you were follow me in the back here, yep. uh, so we have microphones in the back as well. Uh, what are we mounting here? Yeah. So we're uh, on this car. We have two exhausts, um, but at the same spot. So we could uh, microphone uh, put the microphone as uh, if it's only one, but we want the stereo perspective as much as possible. So we're gonna put three yeah. mics on each exhaust pipe. Uh, to get uh, different characteristics and different, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, distances from the exhaust. Yeah, so three mono uh, mics on each exhaust. And, in and one center. Oh, all right. The number plate. Yeah. And then if you look inside the car, what are we going to mount in here? Yeah, so here we usually um, mount uh, two uh, stereo pairs. One in the front window and one in, in the back window. Uh, it depends uh, what we feel like, but often it's one wide AB in the front and then ORTF in the back window. And also we're using an uh, ambisonic microphone uh, in the center to capture uh, 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 oh, yeah, the ambisonic, so that uh, it's possible to decode it later. Did we miss any microphones we are mounting on the car? No. Okay, so. so that's all, folks. A huge thank you to Pole Position Productions for their insight on how they capture their vehicles. I rely heavily on their libraries in my daily workflow, and I have learned a lot by looking at their metadata and mixing sessions. For anyone that is interested, I have left links to all of my recording equipment that I use to capture vehicles in the description below. Okay, let's talk about some things we need to think about when we're putting a car sequence together. Every engine has unique characteristics. But just like guns, if you don't have the exact make and model of the car available, you can swap out the vehicle for a similar vehicle that has the same number of cylinders. Here are a few examples of what different cylinder types sound like. have spent months organizing my sound effects library by type of cylinder and year the car was made. This type of organization drastically helps me speed up my workflow and makes cutting complicated car sequences much faster. Vehicles are like characters and they have their own unique voices. So when you have a particular car that you are working on in a production, it's important not to swap the vehicle samples you are using. If you need to cut a Camaro ZL1, for example, it is important that you continue to use the same source samples throughout your production. Cars can actually be quite tonal depending on the speed of the vehicle, so being able to match the RPMs when we change perspectives is an extremely important skill to have. Having single recordings with multiple microphone options really help makes this process easier as you can seamlessly blend between the microphone options instead of trying to find the same RPMs in different takes. This is one of the major reasons why I love the Pole Position Productions libraries. They have so many microphone options that you really can't go wrong. Tires have the ability to add so much character to your vehicle designs. They can help determine how the vehicle is moving through the environment and what surfaces the vehicle is driving on, like grass, gravel, snow, dry tarmac, or wet tarmac. But isolated tires can be quite difficult to record, so I have left some of my favorite tire-specific sample libraries in the description below, which includes the Tire Series by The Recordist, Car Chase Sweeteners by Alex Knickerbocker, Skids and Screeches by Pole Position Productions, and Grip by Boom and Pole Position Productions. Sometimes you just can't find the right car buy in a given library or don't have the time or resources to go out and record your own. So having the ability to create your own custom car buys is a super useful skill to have. Luckily for us, this is actually fairly easy to do by using a Doppler plugin. Now Doppler plugins are 
fairly straightforward to use and most major DAWs now come with a Doppler plugin for free. Load in engine sounds, set your in and out points, and mark where the car wipes the screen. And boom, you got a car by. If you want to make things sound even more realistic, you can do the exact same processing on the exhaust samples. Just crossfade between the two so the engine approaches and the car exits. Layer in some synthetic effects and you have a super realistic car by made out of stationary samples. Let's talk about five simple techniques you can do to spice up your interiors. Adding some filtered engines to your interior samples will really help bring your interiors to life. When appropriate, you can also go ahead and add some suspension hits. When driving on the highway, there are other cars on the road. So having some filtered car buys play when we whip past the other vehicles on the road really helps fill out the space and gives us that sense of speed. This might be a less obvious one, but try adding some interior tire recordings. You can do this a number of ways through the use of reverb and filters, but I love the option included within Grip, which allows you to turn the entire plugin from an exterior plugin to an interior plugin. Dovetailing. Dovetailing is a musical term where each phrase is connected by overlapping the end of one phrase with the beginning of the next. We can use this exact same technique when we change camera perspectives on a car sequence. The goal here is to make each transition as smooth as possible. So when we cut from one perspective, it is a common practice to have longer fade-ins and fade-outs on samples rather than having fade-outs happen on the cuts. When working on an intense scene, Using synthetic effects can really help add that extra bit of grit or intensity. Things like whooshes, impacts, drones, risers, and downers all really help heighten the intensity of your mixes. Armed with this knowledge, let's have a look at this car sequence and break it down. A huge thank you to Pole Position Productions for hopping on this video with me. Please go check out their libraries below as they are honestly top-notch sample library creators. If you liked the video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And hey, let me know what some of your favorite movies or shows or games that feature some amazing car sounds. Now go make some noise.